Hey again, so this is the GQ interview with Neil Druckmann on The Last of Us Part 2. It's a fairly long interview, I'm not going to go through all of it, but I will go through three paragraphs that I thought were noteworthy. Uh, some of these, some watchers have been sharing with me, say, hey, check this out. It's like, yep, I read that. Uh, I was unsure whether I'd do a whole thing about this, but that would take too long, so I'm just going to cover some of these paragraphs and see what you guys think about it. So this is by the blog poster. It's also the most diverse blockbuster of its kind, maybe ever. Ellie is an openly gay protagonist, but there are also trans and ethnic minority characters in leading roles, pushing the boundaries of representation further than any before it. In a medium often as anti-progressive as this one, part two feels like a big middle finger. Really? Okay. Well, I don't think gaming is anti-progressive. There are quite a number of trans and bisexual and gay characters in stories, especially from Bioware that I can think of off the top of my head. So it's not that gamers or gaming are against ethnic minority characters or trans characters. There's just no reason to include them. It's not a big deal. It's never an issue that pops up. There are elements that we've seen Bioware put into their stories for whatever reason, like in Dragon Age Inquisition, you're like, oh, okay, one of the tertiary characters is trans. Whoop-de-doo. Same with Mass Effect Andromeda, that one mind random character. One sentence tells you that they're trans. It's like, whoop-de-doo. It means nothing. It doesn't, it doesn't affect anything. It's just there for the sake of it, which is, I guess, fine if you just want a bunch of random detail that means nothing to you, but who cares? And if they're just random bits of data then it doesn't make any difference. It doesn't, it could be anyone because we don't ultimately care about these. They're not even characters. There's just a bunch of information on the screen telling us, yeah, this person is not what they look like. It's like, okay, and? So in this case, they're actively putting trans and ethnic minority characters in the story. And again, you have to say, well, why is that relevant? Who cares? What's the big deal? And ultimately it isn't. But when you're shoving it in her face, if it's this thing that keeps popping up for no reason, then you'll have a problem. Then it's kind of weird. And the main problem was with Dragon Age Inquisition because of the Canari and the retcon that happened between how the Canari are super ultra strict. And all of a sudden, according to Raging Bull, they're not. So it's part of the lore that gets changed for the sake of it just because they want to introduce an element of diversity is breaking the narrative or breaking the believability of a certain aspect of the narrative. So that's where things break down. Another paragraph I'd like to show is right here. So here's the court director Eric Pangilian, sorry, Pangilinin, I can't pronounce that, is preparing to cruise back to his desk on his micro scooter? Okay. You wouldn't think it'll end up good, considering how effed up it sometimes is, he says quietly. People on the outside think we get it right the first time, like we're Spartans, the best of the best. It's actually just a billion iterations. And this is after stating there is one work day remaining. And as we know, crunch time is a real problem at Naughty Dog, with 70% of former Naughty Dog devs from Uncharted 4 leaving the company. So there's a lot of turnover. There's a lot of newbies coming in who have to be taught the ropes in order to work with their tool sets, how to do things, how to build things. And that's a huge problem. You would think that you'd get into a really good studio, but a lot of people from Uncharted 4 who did say this is not the best place to work anymore, regardless of the quality. It's not worth the effort to go through all this crunch time just to make a game. So... They are still in crunch mode, or rather they have been for a while. And it's not the best working environment. So, And the last one. Um, no one saw it coming. On April 27th, over an hour of footage and several major beats in the story were leaked online. It spread quickly, far quicker than Sony could contain it. The period following was one of the worst in Naughty Dog's history. Homophobia and transphobia became rife around the discussion of part two as players learned of its diverse cast and narrative direction. 
And that's a general reaction. People don't like something which is different. And you have to understand that. You have people who are having certain expectations. They don't need all this agenda-pushing nonsense. Unless these characters are so vital in their sexuality and sexual identity or, or racial background changes things or is plot relevant, you're just prognosticating to the left of the aisle for whatever reason. I don't see why that is. On the surface, no one really cares. Like, yeah, this is a person, this is a character, whatever. But it's say, it seems rather strange within the setting to have all these characters of various backgrounds and diversities and sexualities and sexual identities when you're in a post-apocalyptic world of, was it mushroom zombies called the clickers? When you're really just trying to survive. That's the point of the story. So how would sexuality and diversity work in a rebuilding of humanity? Probably wouldn't work too well. You probably need to go back to conservative values of, of males and females coming together, forming family units, and rebuilding society. But uh, nothing says you can't have something on the side or a non-reproductive partner, I suppose. There just has to be good reasons for that aside from titillation, aside from, hey, look, they're taking their clothes off. It's like, oh, okay, is this a romance? Is this just a fling? Is this the nature of one of the main character's personalities or social behaviors? So just having things for the sake of it is called tokenism, and that does not make stories make sense. They don't have value. They don't have meaning behind them. Fleshing out someone's backstory for the sake of it is also referred to as fluff. Who cares about this secondary or tertiary character? What difference does it make if it doesn't affect the plot? If it's just some guy or some girl or some trans person, who cares? What difference does it make? Druckmann received a deluge of anti-Semitic messages in the following weeks, writing, drawings, and all the stuff you'd associate with fascism's greatest hits. So already we know which aisle this interviewer is on. I highly doubt a bunch of angry gamers are fascists. And I'm getting sick and tired of anyone really claiming you're a fascist or the far right or the far this or the far that just because you don't like certain elements in your stories, just because you don't like being preached to in your highly expensive, highly anticipated product that you have an affiliation with, that you have a likeness for, that you actually might enjoy. It gets tedious. It gets annoying. And... We've been getting this for the past 10 years, 15 years, as politics ramps up its ugly head again. It happens every election year in states. Uh, it happens all the time in more left-leaning countries like Canada or centric-leaning countries. So we want to escape. We want to get away from this crap. So this is probably why I don't read GQ magazine. I don't know how they got this interview, but apparently they're of like-minded. If, if you're accusing people on Twitter of being fascists, which I don't think has anything to do with calling someone anti-Semitic if someone is calling someone anti-Semitic. or it's, it's a strange thing to say. If you look at the history of fascism, what it means, what it is, um, it's a go-to. This month, it's been racist. If you don't agree with Black Lives Matter, you're a racist, or this or that. So just another word, just another name of people not being able to understand the other side because they disagree with them. Anyway, I can go on about this article. It's fairly big. If you want to check it out, it's on gqmagazine.co.uk. Uh, thanks for listening, and have yourself a great day.